the GH4. It's been my main camera for video since 2014, but now that the GH5 is out, will I be upgrading? Full disclosure, I bought the GH5 because my GH4 touchscreen has stopped working and, well, actually that was the only excuse I needed. I want this video though to be helpful to those trying to decide if they should upgrade from the GH4 or if they're considered purchasing a GH4 or GH5 because this is still a very strong camera. And I also want to address the autofocus issues, but let's start by looking at the physical differences between these two cameras. The GH5 form and button placement is very similar to the GH4, though we do have a little joystick nub that's useful for menu navigation, focus point selection, and the record button has moved up to the top. The whole camera is slightly bigger and about a half pound heavier. I'm a little bummed that they went bigger and heavier. I really like the size of the GH4, but it did allow them to upgrade the viewfinder, which is noticeably bigger, and add dual card slots. Now in the years of hard use and abuse with the GH4 that I've seen, including shooting days worth of footage in hot Tanzania, I've never actually had a card or camera right error, gonna knock on wood, but having two slots gives you a nice backup or split video to one and stills to the other, or just have a massive amount of storage in there. We also have a full HDMI port and a USB-C connection. I'm so glad. I hate those fiddly USB 3 connections. The USB-C allows for fast image download, but it does not support charging over USB. If you want to charge on the go, you need to pick up one of these guys. And while the GH5 uses the same battery, it does seem like battery life is marginally shorter, likely due to the slightly higher resolution LCD and the stabilized sensor. So now we have a stabilized sensor, and just like the G85 I recently reviewed and the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II, when paired with certain lenses, you get dual stabilization. This is useful for longer exposures, though I can't seem to handhold it reliably past a half a second, and with the Olympus I could get easily three seconds. But for the video, you now have silky smooth footage, and you can throw on small primes and still get decently smooth footage. It is fantastic for run and gun. Let's take a look at the rest of the features. We've got 4K at 60 frames per second. Nothing else close to this price offers that. And full sensor use for 4K. No additional crop at 4K like you had with the GH4. Wide lenses stay wide, and this also equals some low light improvements and you now have 10-bit recording internally. This means that the files respond better to grading, among other things. You also got improved slow-mo with 180 frames per second at 1080 versus just 120 frames per second in the GH4. And because you've got 60 frames at 4K, you can kind of do that cinematic slow-mo down to 30 and still have 4K footage. You also have auto ISO in manual video mode. That's a feature that I appreciate. And while this isn't a difference from the GH4, it's important to mention, as I often get asked, there's no recording limit on these cameras. As long as you have space on the cards and power, either battery or AC, the camera's going to continue to record. It will not stop at 29 minutes and 59 seconds. That's pretty rare. And also important for me to mention is that you can continue to record 4K even when using the very capable Wi-Fi remote app something that sets this camera apart from Olympus and Fuji. It's not just on the video side. This is a more capable stills camera with a 20 megapixel sensor now, improved low light handling, and of course you've got that 6K photo feature. They're throwing that 6K around a lot at announcement time. It's really about photos. This is where the camera will take 18 megapixels images at 30 frames per second, and you can pull out individual still images. They are JPEG, so it isn't terribly exciting, but it certainly lets you nail important moments with basically 30 frames per second. You also have the post-focus feature in-camera 4K time-lapse, both of those I mentioned in the G85 review, and that's all good stuff. But now let's talk for a moment about autofocus. The GH4 autofocus, I have found, found it to be adequate for my use. I mostly get focus before starting my videos, and it is always fast and responsive when you force focus. Half press that shutter or back button and it gets focus. When I leave autofocus on during my videos and record my face, 
it usually does a good job. If you watch some of my videos, you can see it hunt when I either have forgotten to turn it off or when I expect to move a little bit more. And in those cases, I don't really think it should. My face is clear subject and that's face tracking and it still hunts sometimes. And there are those times where I want to have a slightly more dynamic video walking toward or away from the camera. And in those cases, I found it to be just okay. If I had to give it a rating, I'd give it a six out of 10 for kind of reliability and tracking, maybe 6.5 if I'm feeling a little generous, where something like the Canon 80D, which I just compared to the G85, or the Sony a6500, that gets closer to an eight out of 10, maybe even a little bit higher. And so far, the GH5 seems very similar in this respect. Now, this is something I don't want to talk in depth about yet because I haven't tested enough. There are additional settings now in the GH5. So I'll be playing with those and I'm going to be back with more as soon as I can definitely say if it's same or better. But for now, I think it feels safe to say it's very similar. So if you were hoping to get a noticeably better autofocus system with the GH5, you should hold off. They have added a sweet focus transition tool, basically lets you rack focus, setting three positions and then jumping between them during recording. This is a great way to use autofocus during video, but with the reassurance, it's going to land exactly where you want. So that brings us to our last and final kind of wrap up, should you upgrade. Autofocus issues aside, let's recap what this camera offers over the GH4. You've got your stabilized 4K video at 60 frames per second, slower slow-mo and higher quality slow-mo, full sensor readout with overall better low light performance, a more capable photo camera, and some additional pro features I actually didn't even mention. You can see those listed at photorec.tv slash GH5, along with additional sample videos and stills that I'll be updating in the days and weeks ahead. And you should follow me on Instagram to see additional content. I'm headed to Yosemite this week and the GH5 is coming with me. I'll be reporting more soon on how it compares to say something like the Sony a6500. And I didn't answer the question, should you upgrade? It really is up to you. If my GH4 hadn't been acting funny, it still would remain my camera of choice and be good enough for me. I'm happy to use these additional features and report them all to you as we move forward. Let me know in the comments what you think. Would you be upgrading? Are you upgrading? Is the autofocus a deal breaker for you? If you found this video helpful, give it a quick thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and that little notification button so you don't miss additional GH5 content. And if you'd like to have a detailed discussion with me regarding the best camera for your needs, consider becoming a photorec.tv member. You get access to my support group along with awesome additional perks, and we can have those conversations where you get the answers you're looking for. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.